Watch as we recycle an old BMG type extruder into a Sherpa Micro. You may have one of these BMG style extruders. This is a clone sitting around. Um, in this case, I'm trying to convert a printer with a Bowden setup that used one of these into a direct drive. Uh, this is quite a heavy setup. It's about 350 grams. It works well, but we're going to recycle it. And we'll do that by initially disassembling because we're going to need the parts inside. And this is quick and easy to do. We'll use an Allen wrench a little later to remove that gear and place it in the proper position. And then here I'm taking off the pressure fitting just in case I want to use it for some other project. We won't need it for this extruder at all. And then, of course, we need these bearings. Um, I found this other side a little harder to pull out. You can use a blade or a really thin screwdriver and pop it out. I pulled out this other pin. It's too long for our purposes. You can either trim it, grind it down, or just purchase a replacement, which is the same size as the shorter one, because we'll need two of these. Here are the 3D printed parts, and I have still have the old motor and old screws. Ignore those long screws, they're going to disappear. But you will need one of these super small pancake motors. You can see it in comparison to the original motor. It's a huge... T uh, size difference. Uh, the gear on the end of this motor has 10 teeth. You can also get them with 8. Um, it's, it's really your choice. I went with the 10. Um, this will save an enormous amount of weight. Um, on the gear, uh, you're going to have to flip this around and then push it in closer to the plastic that is the gear. Uh, we're doing this to make um, the filament holding area of this extruder gear line up with the hole in the body of the Sherpa Micro. And um, once you look at it up close, it'll be obvious uh, as to why we're doing this. So here in the 3D printed parts, uh, you can see I've already inserted the heat set inserts. Uh, there's a total of four, three on the front and one on the motor mount that mounts to the back. Uh, you don't need anything else, uh, which is really kind of nice. Very, very minimal and light. And so to assemble this, I'm going to start by inserting the bearings. Um, I'm going to use a little bearing um, insertion tool that I created here. Um, I'll have a link to the STL. Um, I've used this tool before when assembling other extruders and it works really nicely for these small bearings. Um, I don't find them that easy to insert uh, in straight and firmly and this will help do it. So 
So here I've assembled uh, the lever for the filament retainer. And here you can see I used the two um, small metal dowels or metal rods. Uh, they're both the same size. Uh, you also probably want to take this opportunity to make sure and lubricate the bearing inside the gear. It slides out easy. It's easy to do. Do it now so you don't have to disassemble it, disassemble it later. The short end of this drive gear is most likely too long. It'll protrude out the back and jam into the face of the stepper motor. So you need to file this down. Um, I ended up taking about a millimeter or so off, and then that'll let you properly assemble the extruder. Otherwise, you're gonna have some problems. I'm using the standard black steel screws for this, or bolts, hex bolts, uh, if you like. Um, and in fact, uh, the instructions possibly recommend that maybe you go out and get aluminum ones to save um, significant weight. Uh, maybe I will at some point, but for now, I think I'm pretty happy with the steel. Um, this will work just fine. And again, before you finish assembly, make sure this is not protruding out the back because it'll hit the face and you won't be able to get the gears to mesh correctly. And one end of the motor assembles in the back here, which actually holds the whole extruder assembly together, at least on one end. And then on the top here, I'm actually going to use a washer. I don't think the instructions actually stated explicitly, uh, but just for an extra uh, level of safety or extra margin for safety and uh, to make sure it doesn't damage the plastic because this side is actually adjustable. You want to adjust the positioning of the motor so there's just the tiniest bit of play between uh, the motor gear, the drive gear, and uh, the big, large, white gear. Next, we want to insert the thumb screw with the spring and the washer to finalize the assembly of this. And this will allow you to adjust tension on of the extruder gear, gears onto the filament. And that pretty much completes the build of the Sherpa Micro. And here, comparing it to just the stepper motor of what was on the BMG before, uh, <laughs> the size difference here is really amazing. So is the weight difference. Uh, the full extruder weighed about 350 grams. This one lay weighs just under 100. And that's with the steel screws. And here it is fitting in the palm of my hands which again, I kind of can't get over the size of this thing. It's really beautiful, a little jewel light extruder. If you found this video useful, please click subscribe. And here you can see my slightly overweight extruder at about 90, 99 grams.